Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to stream level one futures data using the TD Ameritrade API. Now by using the service, you'll be able to get any of these fields. So we will be able to get bid and ask price, bid and ask size, the total volume, the last traded size, the quote time, open, high, low, close prices, exchange information, the net change for the day, the percentage change for the day, the exchange name, open interest, the mark price, the minimum tick amount, and the tick value, along with some other metrics. So we have a total of 35 fields. Now in order for us to make a request, we need to build a JSON block. So this is the sample that they give us. We need to pass in the service name, which is level one futures, a random request ID, the command, which is subscription or subs, our account, our source ID. And for the parameters, we're gonna use our symbol as keys and the fields that you want to request. Please watch the streaming intro in order for you to get your account and your source ID along with how to log in and log out, which are all in the function script where I have added this JSON block as well. So if we go to that script, so within the script, you'll find any of the JSON blocks along with the functions that I have gone over thus far. But for this particular video or instance, for the futures level one service, here is our JSON block. So we list our service, our command, a random request ID, our account, and our source. And for the keys, I have wrapped this JSON block within a function so that you can pass in any symbol. And for the fields, I'm just gonna pass in all 36 fields separated by a comma so that we get all the data. So by using this function, you'll be able to request any level one data for any futures that are available on the TD Ameritrade application. So this is our first function. After we build this JSON block, we're gonna go ahead and send it to our streamer to get data. And our very next function, which is called get futures level one. This function will be used to get all the data we have requested. So we start off by getting a list of all the names in API data, which is an environment I send all the streamer data. So once we get a list of names, we're going to go ahead and search for which of those contains the data because not all the messages we get from the streamer contain the level one features data. And I'm going to store it in environment names. Now I'm going to pass that as a list and I'm going to extract the data. So it'll pass all the messages and extract the content. After we extract all the content, I'm going to use our bind list to our bind all of our data. In the next section, I just replace the column names based on the number that was assigned to the column. So here we see that one is the bid price and you can use the documentation for reference if anything changes. So I'm searching for these column IDs, which is this column here and giving them a proper name. So that's all I'm doing in this section. So here we have replaced all 36 column names and then we assign it to our level one futures data. I fixed the time format for the expiry date, the quote time and the last trade time. And then I use NALOCF, which will handle any and A's in our data. So the longer you stream, the more data we receive and therefore this table gets larger and larger. And the last function is optional and you could change this however you want. But all I'm doing in this function is I'm going to plot the bid and the ask along with the last traded price. I'm also going to be adding the spread of the bid and the ask and the last trade size as well. And I'm going to be passing in this function into a shiny app, which will auto update as we get data. Now, once we have that squared away, we're going to use a separate script for us to request this data. So in my main script, I'm just going to request all the functions and JSON blocks. I'm going to establish a connection and make sure we're connected. I'm going to assign my on message function, which is just to print out all the data that we receive out in the console. Similarly on close, I'm just going to print out that we've closed. Now in order for us to log in, we need to send our JSON block to log in with all of our credentials. So if you take a look at the intro to streaming, you'll be able to see that and the requirements needed to build this JSON block. As I previously mentioned, I'm going to create a new environment to store all my messages into, which is called API data. I'm going to rebuild my on message function, which is just to print out the message along with sending all the messages into this new environment. Now we're gonna go ahead and build our JSON block to request the streaming service. So here I'm just gonna assign NQ as our symbol and build that JSON block. I'm gonna send that JSON block so we can stream it. And then finally, once we have enough data, we can run the Shiny app which will display the real time bid and the ask. So within this app, I made a sidebar panel, which will let you choose between the number of observations you want to display. So we have a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 500, and it will start off at 250, so almost towards the middle. So this will be part of our user interface. Now as the server, we need to create a function, and this function will update every two seconds. So it'll pause for two seconds, and then we're gonna use our get futures level one function, and we're gonna pass that into our plot bid and the ask function that we created. And then finally, once we're done, we can go ahead and log out and close our connection. So let's go through an example. 
All right, so we're gonna start off by sourcing our functions, establishing a connection, getting the ready state, assigning our function for the on message and the on close. We're gonna send our login. We're gonna create a new environment, replace our on message block, build the JSON block to request level one futures data. We're gonna send that data to our streamer connection. And once that's running, you'll see the messages out in the console. So they look something like this. So we can take a look at that table by running the following line. So here we have all level one data and we see that this is running in real time. We have our bid and the ask, our last price, the bid size, ask size, the total volume for this timestamp, which would be located in quote time, the last size or the number of contracts traded, the last trade time, our high price, low price, the previous close, the exchange ID, the description of the futures contract. We have our open price, the net change, the percentage change, the exchange name, security status, the open interest, the mark price, the minimum tick and the point value, the product, the price format, which I believe these are in decimal, the trading hours for this futures contract. Here we have a boolean of whether or not this contract is tradable. The multiplier, is this contract active? The settlement price for the previous day, the active symbol, and the futures expiration date. So now let's run our Shiny app. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run this block. All right guys, so this is the plot in real time. Here we see that it's updating continuously and the green line represents our ask. The red is the bid. The dotted black line is the last traded price. The first subgraph represents the last trade size along with the spread. We also see our net change for the day and the percentage change along with the timestamps for this trade range. We can also change the number of observations. So if you want a more detailed view, you could scroll this to 10, which will give you the last 10 observations, or you can scroll all the way to 500 and this will display the last 500 observations. So essentially this should serve as an example. You could always change the plot and the plot type you want to display. But the main focus is that this is up and running and it's updating in real time. So once you're done streaming, you're gonna to wanna to send this logout block, which you can find in the function script and close the connection. But as long as your connection is established, you can run the streamer throughout the day. Well guys, this concludes the video. I hope this was useful information. I'll go ahead and add these scripts on Patreon and leave a link down in the description area. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.